So there are four main types of tissues in the human body. There's epithelial, muscle, connective, and nervous tissues. To begin, epithelial tissues are there to protect, absorb, filter, excrete, and secrete, and for sensory response. Epithelial tissues are traditionally a sheet of cells that cover um, surfaces and cavities, as well as things like, on the other hand, we have those covering and lining epithelials. On the other hand, we have glandular epithelials, which make up the external sheaths of glands or the gland themselves, such as our thyroid gland, which excretes thyroxine um, into the bloodstream, as well as T3 and T4 um, and other hormones. Um, epithelial are set up in different facets. They can either be a single layer or simple, or they can be numerous layers, and they can be stratified, is what it's referred to as. Stratified just means more than one layer. Um, they come in different shapes as well. So you have squamous, which is like a disc or dinner plate. Um, you have cuboidal, which is cube-like in shape. You have cylindrical or columnar. And then you have a different kind of irregular varieties. Um, ones that are pure cuboidal, and when um, applied to tension, like such as the bladder, they will flatten and become more um, like a squamous cell. Or there is other types, um, modified columnar cells, which do things like produce mucus. They're called goblet cells. Or you have ones like in the trachea that are irregular as they are thinner at the top, wider at the bottom, and then they switch wider at the top, thinner at the bottom. So they appear to be multiple layers, even though there's one nuclei, one cell. They just appear to be stretched. Connective tissue serves to bind and support, protect and isolate, act as fuel storage, such as fat or adipose, and transport substances like the blood. The blood is one of our most important connective tissues. There's four main classes of these. There's connective tissue, both loose and proper. There's cartilage, blood, and bone. Um, all have an embryonic origin, so they are um, developed in utero and stay without us through the rest of our lives. Um, ossification is a process in which the hyaline cartilage of the fetal uh, skeleton becomes bone. Um, so we go from one form of connective tissue to another form of connective tissue. Um, they are all comprised of cells with extracellular matrix. So take blood for example, we have blood cells, white blood cells, mast cells, macrophages, all that are in blood um, with the plasma as its matrix. In this case, it's thin. However, something like cartilage, in which it's going to, depending on its matrix, so like hyaline cartilage, like the ear, it is very flexible. Um, but if you take something like fibro cartilage, like the intervertebral discs, there's going to be a series of interwoven um, fibrinous um, uh, matrices. So there's gonna be fibro, uh, fibrogens that uh, act and um, keep it strong. Different ones are going to be more flexible depending on their matrix and how they're made. Um, then we have our muscular tissue. There's three main types. There is skeletal muscle, which is voluntary muscle that's going to be striated. So it's going to appear to have stripes. It's going to be single nucleated. Our cardiac muscle, on the other hand, is going to be non-striated. There's going to be something called intercalated discs which help with the electrical conductivity and stopping that where it needs to go, or getting that where it needs to go, stopping it from traveling too far. And we have smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, as well as our cardiac muscle, are gonna be multinucleated. They're both gonna be involuntary. Um, skeletal muscle is going to attach bone to the rest of our body, right, or muscle. Um, it's going to be attached to bone, and it's going to help with movement. Um, we have a nervous tissue, 
nervous tissue is going to be things like our brain, our spinal cord, and our nerve endings. These are also referred to nerve fibers and can be up to one meter in length. Um, they serve specialized function in generating and conducting nerve impulses. They have finger-like projections that help them communicate between different um, nerve fibers. They have quite a long shaft to them um, that's going to be covered in a myelin sheath. And they, can, they have the ability to send um, information from one cell to the next via these things called dendrites, these fingers-like projections that are able to communicate one with another. That's everything.